Can you tell us of a clinical story that would help people better understand music therapy? Um, well, I can, let me talk about, and I, I, I could say her name, her first name, Maureen, um, because this was a woman who had um, a particular tumor that was causing uh, different kinds of dyskinesias, very um, irregular, uncontrollable movements. She had tardive dyskinesia, so her tongue would protrude. Some of it was because of medication, some of it, of it was because of the tumor. And the unfortunate thing with um, healthcare, people providing direct healthcare, um, many times when somebody isn't verbal or can't make themselves verbally understood, which she couldn't do because of her speech impairment, they assume that the person has dementia and doesn't understand. And so they treat them um, like they don't understand what's going on. They do things to them, but not with them. And I would see this and I would get frustrated because I knew that Maureen not only um, could participate very well in music, um, but at, when she participated, you could tell and actually evaluate that she was fully cognitively intact. There was absolutely nothing wrong with her intelligence, nothing wrong with her verbal comprehension, nothing wrong with her speech if you could dis, um, disengage the dyskinesia. And so um, by having her sing, and sing in a very sing-song, similar to melodic intonation therapy, but in a very time-ordered fashion, in a very melodic fashion, she could speak. And so what I would do is take her back after a session to the unit, to the charge nurse, and say, I want you to hear Maureen speak. And I would have Maureen tell the nurse in this sing-song way um, what her name was, who she is, where, what her room number was, what she likes about um, where she is, what she doesn't like about where she is, and the nurse's face went blank because she just assumed that this woman had severe dementia.